we know that PRDG um, is installed within two minutes. And after we've done the smart setup, we added credentials and the inheritance. Um, we are ready to go. You see all the colors on the top. Red is the indication for yeah, an error. So these sensors are all in error state. Can directly click in. If the ping sensor, if the ping sensor has an error, probably the device is not reachable, huh? or turned off, or whatever it is. We have something that we call acknowledged. It's still down. It's still in somehow an error, but it's the, the administrator which said, okay, I know about that problem because we will lock each and every error and state into our built-in ticket system. So we know that um, within the team, within the admin team, somebody cares about this problem. So this person will um, acknowledge the alarm and you don't get any notification any longer. Hmm? Okay, the um, yellow one is the warning state. What is a warning? Let's pick this example. It's a disk free sensor which says free space, obviously a Windows system, therefore we use, for example, in this case, the WMI free disk space sensor says there is only a 16% <coughs> left. It's not an error, right? But it's something I have to care. So we are able to define limits on our own and say upper limit, upper warning limit, lower warning, lower error limit. Makes sense if we, we had it, um, environmental monitoring temperature. We feel comfortable between 18 and 24 degrees, for example, hmm? and so on. Does you would set it up, yeah. Does this apply globally for every sensor that has the same channel or is by specific local tool? Especially for this specific sensor or channel. Because mm -hmm. it probably does make sense. If you want to, you, you also can clone sensors. So once you've set up the upper or lower error limit, all you do later on is this. You, you clone that specific sensor with a mouse click. Way, uh, to create a template, for example, for a given type of... Uh device. Let's say you want to monitor Windows server systems. You want just to, you know, apply the settings for all the machines. You want to get always the same probes. Yes, of course. You can create your own templates within some mouse clicks. This is all you have to do. We can see this later on. Is it possible to define chains? For example, if I lose a switch, that I only get one alert and not ten for the devices behind the switch? That's a very, very, very good question. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Yes, this is something that we call dependencies, okay? Absolutely right. If you have a switch and you do port monitoring, which probably doesn't make sense to monitor all in each port, right? Um, we're interested in Armon, so we see packet loss and stuff like that. But anyway, if the device is in trouble, the switch is offline or damaged, PRDG, probably will fire up a 50, 60 notifications, SMSs, push notifications, or whatever you did in order to inform you, which is pretty much and a big problem because you're not able to concentrate and focus on the, on the real problem. So then, yes, it makes sense to say, let me show you this. Ping, edit settings. And there we have show down, acknowledge, status and error. And we also can say this is the master object for parent. What now happens is if we run into a problem, if the switch itself is not pingable anymore, it will automatically acknowledge the alarm and pause each and every other sensor within 
that device. And you only get one information switch is down, not reachable, okay? Isn't that the same if you have um, a maintenance window and you want to temporarily then, disable? Yes, of course, then we schedule, for example. Um, showcase, well, you have a, a printer in the, in, the, in the branch office. Turned off manually every day. The user it does. Five o'clock, I'm going home. Power off. Pierre Chi, well, says, okay, problem, hello. Mm -hmm. The device is not reachable anymore. So yes, you can um, schedule that period of time. Then the sensor is paused for eight, 10 hours and automatically um, comes back as you define it. Okay, so inheritance means also, this is, um, this is the probe, for example, this is something that we call New Horizon. If we edit or if we add our credentials on the, on the root level for the Windows world, for the Linux, for the VMware, for SNMP database, Amazon CloudWatch and so on, that's the inheritance. So we will have these credentials over here, for example, SNMP for the Buffalo Terrace Station, which is a NAS system. Um, how to add sensors, how do we do that? Let's scroll down a little bit. Let's stay here, it's an APC, a switched rack PDU. And we say, okay, we want to have a new sensor there. Let's say just right click, for example, context menu. Um, we're interested in phew, a ping sensor. We just tap it in the search field. There it is. So the question now is a ping, a ping jitter, or whatever it is. So we're happy with a ping sensor. Sensor name, priority, the packet size is a little bit different between the Windows and the Unix word, for example, and the scanning intervals. Sometimes it doesn't make sense to have high scanning intervals. For example, if you use a Windows update sensor, which says, hey, there is a Windows update, it should be enough to do this twice a day, right? Not in a five second interval. Okay, but anyway, we can change these settings later on. There we is. The, the gray setting, coming back to what we've been talking about, means no data yet, okay? But we didn't discuss the, the blue and the orange one, which we will do right now. But first of all, manually check now. And there we go. So again, this is a sensor. It's the ping time, it's the maximum, it's the minimum, and it's the packet loss. These are the channels. Um, green, everything is up and running and it's fine. Blue, the paused sensors, which we manually paused or um, for example, which was post by dependency. Then we have the, the orange one. I think that's a very impressive one. Let's take this one. It says the one hour interval average of 258 seconds, the execution time, is unusually low for this specific hour of the week. So we compare what it is, what, we do, what do we have now and what was in the past. Okay? It's not a warning, it's not an error, it's something unusual going on. But you can also like have notifications of unusual stuff, <laughs> right? Yes, no problem. So if we want to add another sensor, and this is all about Dell, for example, here, the R730, which we used in the presentation, we add a sensor. Dell, and whatever it is, we can use it. We also can um, define target system types like, okay, I'm interested in um, 
sensors for the Windows world, for the Linux world, and so on, or based on a technology like SNMP. And we also have these custom sensors, which will help if there is not a single sensor within the 240 ready-built sensors which we provide, then we use SNMP sensors or SNMP custom sensors. I'll show you what I mean. Let's go to the, yes, there we go. The switch rec PDU. This is a German vendor called Gude. And we are interested in the current in total. Therefore, we use a sensor factory sensor, which um, this is an overall of the two available channels. Hmm? So we do some math here. But what I really wanted to show you is, for example, this one, the current for the channel two is an SNMP custom sensor, which means you do not necessarily have to import a MIP file if you're only interested in five or six sensors. If you know the UID and as well the community string for SNMP, you'll find just simply at the OID here. And you're ready to go. Um, if you focus your attention on a specific object and you want to go back in time mm -hmm. and check the history of the, of the object, uh, how, big, how long is the retention time, standard retention time for, uh, for you know, collecting and storing the data? Also a very good question. Well, um, first of all, we store the raw data, no average, okay? We don't aggregate data. We directly store it into our own file-based database, which also means no SQL. You don't have to pay for Microsoft SQL or something like that separately, which means the software itself, the calls and so on, you don't need it. It's all included. And the historical data, you will see it here. Um, usually, we store the information for one year, but if you need two or three years, you're fine. All you have to do is go to the setup section and change this, okay? Which also means we have the two days, we have the 30 days, we have the 365 days, okay? If you want details from this specific sensor, you can also um, export um, the information using XML or CSV, which is comma separated value, right? And of course, the time interval between data points depends on the specific sensor and the specific channel. There is no one rule for all of them, right? It depends on the technology, it depends on the protocol, and so on. And uh, it is possible to aggregate many sensor data in a one, uh, one single uh, graph? Yeah, yeah, of course. You can do much more. Two options, reporting, which means SLA, whatever. We will see it later on. I still have six minutes, so I have to hurry up a little bit. Uh, somewhere it is. Of, yes, of course, we are able to consolidate sensors, many sensors into one sensor. And the other option is to do something that we call reports. Yeah, and uh, about uh, the report, is it possible to, sh to schedule a uh, report data every month, every uh, year to, um, to send? Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, imagine uh, the service provider case, so we have to send uh, many customer reports yeah. about yeah. what is going on uh, Absolutely. this installation. Yeah. So, um, first of all, you, you define the, the paper size, means A4 landscape, for example, and then schedule. That's the question right now. huh? Um, schedule every specific date for the specific customer, the first Monday in the month or the last Friday or whatever it is. Yes, absolutely, no problem. And then you simply um, add the sensors. Therefore, we have this one here. Um, so we can select the sensors manually. It's a drag and drop from the left to, uh, from the right to the left. And then we can say we are only interested in the minimum here, for example, and so on and so on. And it's up to you to say we need um, the graphs or we just are interested in the tables or whatever it is. Absolutely, no problem. 
is it possible to add personal notes to the alerts as a knowledge base for help desk, for example? Personal notes to alerts. Yeah, yeah yes, yes, one, yeah. If we talk about the ticket system, and we know that okay. all the notifications directly also go into the ticket system, we're able to do that. Yeah, edit, for example, there we go. That when you acknowledge as well, Excuse? when you acknowledge an alert, you can yeah. do that as well, probably. Yeah, but automatically add um, your, your logging credentials. Mm -hmm. So we know that has been Anna or that was me or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, of course. Notifications, I really have to hurry up a little bit. Um, bottom, notifications. You see they're already pre-configured, many of them. You have to be a little bit careful. Um, I mean, from my perspective, we have active and passive notifications. If you, get, if you already get 100, 500 emails per day, probably doesn't make sense to get um, an email if something very dramatic, if a dramatic thing happens. Huh? Okay, so you should consider to use SMS, for example, or like in the US, the pager. Hmm? Um, you also could Execute HTTP actions means um, use, um, do something with a RESTful API, for example, or execute programs, which means you execute your own scripts, your own programs, um, or send push notifications. Are there any integration with uh, many automation tools for the, um, the action execution if something happens? It's up to you if you use your own um, scripts. Yeah. Yes, sure. Mm -hmm. Or simply send an email. Yes. Otherwise, we have sent Amazon simple notification services or simply assign a ticket to a specific person. Unlimited. The maps. Maps, that's something that we call dashboards. So the question is how do we visualize an information. We are interested in the ESX hardware, for example, and we need some specific details. This is how it could look like, right? So it is something, it is drag and drop. On the, fir on the left side, we see the device tree. We still see the um, remote probes, the groups, the subgroups as well as the devices, and there we have the sensors. So all we have to do is select the device or the sensor, drag and drop it into the map designer, and finally decide here on the right side on the properties how this thing should look like. Means it can be a graph, it can be something like this, it can be a traffic light, for example. As an overall, the ESXi means the data store, the virtual machines, the, the, the host performance, and so on. In total, everything is green, so that's fine. Or if not, it's red, because we run out of RAM. Is that just an image file, or is that a, a Visio stencil? It's, it's, yeah, it's an image file from Visio. <laughs> Absolutely right, yeah. So how do we do that? Again, simple, we define the map layout, which is, for example, uh, this. A background image if you want to. For example, a floor plan for my environmental data, for a data center, whatever it is. And there we go. So we simply add, let's take the synology, for example. It's a disk station, or in this case, it's a rec station, the system health in total, and then we're able to decide how this should look like. For example, we take the traffic light, everything is green. Hmm? If it, is it possible to export uh, that for a third-party software? Yes, but you don't have to export it since we're able to allow access which means integrated as an iframe within to um, your internet, for example, or for your customer, customer yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, with um, login credentials required or not. This is absolutely up to you. It's a central point of view. Yeah? 